Well, this truck is actually designed specifically to storm chase and help me uh, be able to um, deploy my instruments to pass the tornadoes. Uh, it's a Linex truck bank cover. This is actually a new uh, polymer base that uh, Linex just uh, just came out with. It's um, not even available yet. This thing is sprayed on about a quarter of an inch thick. Both the shell and the truck has it, has it on the top. And the reason for it is that we go into the nastiest hell course you can, you can ever imagine. Because not only do I research tornadoes, I research hail. Okay? I try to find the biggest hail I can find. And of course, you know, vehicles don't do too well in hailstorms. And so this is an attempt to try to save some of the sheet metal. This is kind of dusty and dirty, but this is the uh, this is the new probe instrument, which is considerably larger. It's heavy. Oh, it's 400 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> so what our goal was to, and, and this thing's actually folded in half. We get it out, we put it on the tailgate, and there's another half that folds up. The objective is to get wind speeds up at, at a height of two meters. We finally have the technique down to where we can get this thing off the truck, turned on, and deployed in 20 seconds. And did you do it that quickly under real life conditions? Oh yeah. In fact, I think I think we did it faster. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. It's then. amazing what you know when something is chasing you. That tornado is probably from here to about the second or third pole down. And mm. did, did you ever take a direct hit? The yes. instrumentation. Yes. Did it You'll up? see in the show. Yeah. 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 yeah we took some uh, collected some first ever measurements of wind speed at different heights, which has never been done before, and that data is yet to be published. And did it survive? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. There's actually a smoke generator. See those orange things up there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a smoke generator. So it tells you which way the smoke is going. Yeah. The idea is, is for our vehicles to kind of get close to the tornadoes and within what they call a supercell thunderstorm. A supercell is a basically a very powerful thunderstorm that persists for hours. And what we're trying to do is not only study the tornado itself, but also and study the also study the environment that, that tornadoes exist in. And for us to do that, we make measurements nearby. So we built this rack system to hold all of this gear. The, the anemometer, the, the, the device that measures it has to be a certain height so that the airflow of the vehicle is not affected at all. And what's yeah. a, what you got on the front here? What's this instrument right here? All of this gear here is to study hail. So how big was the hail you found? Uh, this year we managed to get into some two and a half inch hail. Unfortunately, last baseball uh, size. Yeah, it's about baseball size. Yeah. Um, in South Dakota, I think back in July, a world record hailstone fell. This big. Basketball size. That's Bas almost basketball size. And I wasn't there. I'm bummed about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> that might put even a dent in the uh, carbon fiber of a Boeing plane. It would have smashed. Yeah. It, it would have smashed. Um, and last year we were chasing a, uh, an EF4 tornado near Bowdoin, South Dakota on May 22nd. We were probably about 30 seconds away from that tornado deploying instruments and uh, this, this vehicle was rocking pretty good. In fact, um, both rear doors, we had four people in the, in the vehicle. We had a Discovery camera guy that sat in the, in the driver, rear, rear driver and then we had another um, uh, uh, meteorologist sitting in the back seat. When they both had their doors open, the wind came by, an 80 mile an hour gust of wind came by and just cleaned out whatever coats, uh, snacks, everything that was on the seat. It all went out the door and it never touched the ground. It just took off across the field. Like a giant vacuum cleaner. Yeah, like a giant vacuum cleaner. So, oh, so tell me, are you scared when that, in that moment of time? Or are you out there thinking to yourself, this is uh, you know, my call to God? or? No, actually, um, when I'm in those situations, I'm pretty focused on, you know, the logistics, job. the job, and keep my crew safe. So I take responsibility for the for the, my 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 crew safety. So I call the shots, whether or not we go or we stay, we drive down that muddy road or not. So. To answer your question, I don't have much time to be scared. So obviously, the other guys who do this, they like to try to get into the tornado. I mean, their 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 yeah, right. their their gig is to drive and have a tornado come right over them. What, what's That's your right. feeling on that? I mean, it seems like you're more focused on doing the actual science. Well, I'm I'm very focused to doing the science. I my personal opinion is that I really don't see any real reason to be driving into tornadoes. Sean Casey, great friend, he's an IMAX filmmaker. You know, he's probably got the best case because he wants to get that, the ultimate IMAX shot of that tornado coming right at him, right over the top. 
you could argue whether or not that's worth your life, you know. And he's actually pretty good. He can judge whether or not that tornado is too strong. He might, his vehicle's design maybe survive maybe an EF1, EF2. Push an EF3 or larger, I don't know. How, he's got some problems. How heavy of an object can like a EF5 tornado pick up? Is this something, a, a semi-trailer EF, truck? EF5 has been known to pick up uh, tractor trailer rigs. Uh, locomotives. Oh my gosh. They can derail locomotives and tumble them around like, you know, like, like, a, like a tumbleweed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it, a lot of these guys are, they're, are actually banking on the wind profile. Both vehicles, they've got skirts that, that either retract or touch the ground. Their idea is that the wind may not get up underneath it. But the problem is that the wind is only part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that, um, Tornadoes carry debris. I don't know if you've ever been hit by a two, a two by four traveling 130 miles an hour. It, it's, there's not much that can stop it because you know, you've seen the pictures on documentary television. Two by fours can sail right through a refrigerator. They can sail right through a car door. Um, they might even do some significant so damage like to a TIV or Reed's vehicle. So I don't know. So it's like somebody throwing, you know, spears at you at 200 miles an hour. That's right. Yeah, yeah it's a or, lot of velocity and a lot of energy behind that. And so they may have taken some, some uh, protective measures to protect against that. The problem, again, is if you're out here in a field, you've got a good chance to go ahead and set your vehicle out there. What's going to prevent that combine, that 20,000 pound combine, if it starts cartwheeling towards you and you're sitting there? I don't care what vehicle you have. You're toast.